Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Uh, just come to look at a Range Rover Evogue. So inside this car, uh, if we start it up, we've got restricted performance uh, engine management light on. So we clear that bonnet one. So yeah, it's got restricted performance and the engine management light is on. So we've just run a diagnostic scan Got a P006A called their manifold pressure correlation, uh, DPF restriction, and turbocharger boost performance. So, the, this one, turbo boost performance and the manifold pressure are going to be both related. Um, so, what I'd imagine here is if you've got a correlation in the airflow and then the boost performance is not correct it's most likely got an air leak in between the both of these two items so i'm going to hook up a smoke detector for a do a smoke leak tech test so i've got the battery tray cover here removed and we're just going to connect up the smoke detector leak detector now we've loosened off the intake pipes here seven millimeters and another one on this side so we'll just get those disconnected and then we'll uh, connect straight into the intake from here and we'll just pump up the bladder inside there so it doesn't leave any gaps in the intake turn on the smoke machine we'll wait till we've got some smoke flowing so because of the oval shape i can't really get a good seal on that so i'll just connect that back up and we'll connect it on this end instead So we can see some smoke there is rising from down this area. See just here, it looks like it's been rubbing against the starter motor. Got a big gash there in it. Okay, to find that leak there, we've used this uh, Launch UK Smoke One smoke detector there. Uh, I'll put a link to all of them in the video. And we have now just one picked up the new part here. That's the numbers are on it. So we need to get this fitted. And it's got a hose clip just down there. And then another one just at the, underneath the intake there. So I've got a quarter inch ratchet here, it's just a little bit too long, I can't get it in between the gap. So what I'm using is uh, this kit here, laser 7799, it's a uh, compact unit. That's a laser low profile kit there. So I should just be able to get my hand down there. Can't really get an angle where you can see, but the uh, Jubilee clip is just down there. Now we've just got the spanner here on the other side. Again, it's difficult to see, but it's just round about there. So we've just slided the pipe all the way along. We should be able to just pull it out from this direction. It's getting stuck on something down there. So that's the 
pipe there. And there you can see the split. It's right where I was going over the starter motor. Now we have the new pipe, we're just going to feed it right down in the same area. Just going to slide it all the way down and then across, get it connected on there. Okay, so that's the new boost pipe on there. If I get it at that angle, you can just about see the Jubilee clip there on that one. And then this one will come down just there. New Jubilee clip back on there. So that's the boost leak fixed. So we're just going to start the car up and we'll uh, have a look at the live data. 74. So we have 33 kPa, which is 330 millibars on idle. So we're just under the vehicle. We'll pull off the uh, differential pressure hose there. This is the one that goes before the DPF, and then here you have the one that goes after. So if we're looking at it from back here, this is the after the DPF, and then you've got the next one that goes in just before it is just behind there. So using a bottle of Launch UK DPF cleaner and it's connected up to the compressor with a pressurized gun. Okay, so we've got that connected directly into the DPF there. Now we can come back out and put the fluid in. So we'll just give the trigger a squeeze. And we'll fill it up. And it goes directly into the DPF there. And this is connected to the compressor that's inside the van. So that's it, we're all done, we'll disconnect that. Okay, so we'll connect it back up to the original hoses there now. Okay, so we're just going to check the codes again. Uh, we've just got another code there for the differential pressure sensor. Uh, we don't normally get that come up, so I'm not sure why that one's come up. But, uh, okay, we need to pick. My um, launch diagnostic, uh, I forgot to put it on charge and it hasn't charged up. Don't know why it's asking me all this. Let's just go back. I don't really need to do all this anyway. So we're back out, we'll just do a quick erase on the codes. Even though some of them will stay. If we go back in, we should still have the DPF one. Okay, it's cleared temporarily. It will come back. Live data. So we just need to search for the differential pressure again. Then we can start the vehicle up. So we're down to three on idle now. So give it some revs. Hold it at about 3,000 for a few minutes. So 28 kPa. I don't usually like using this one because it's, it's not as accurate. Millibars that would be around about 260. So we want to get that under 80, uh, but under 50 ideally, but under 80 maximum. 80 maximum on revs and 10 maximum on idle. 
So we're coming down. Let's give it some revs up and down. Hold that 3000 again. So we're at 12 kPa there, it's coming down nice and quick. So anything under 8 is okay. 8 will be 80, 7 is 70. So we're down to 6, we're down to 5. So we're well within limits now. 4 is 40, 40 millibars. Now we'll let it idle. We're down to zero. See there, we're getting a bit of smoke out the back. Just see there, a little bit of uh, soot that comes out. And just smoke from the exhaust that will clear away in a few minutes. You just get the uh, sooty residue coming out the bottom there. You can see there I've got a little uh, helper coming along today, he's just watching. Okay, we're on zero at idle, uh, 3000 RPM. Let's try and get hold of it there steady if I can. Around about three, three to four, which is 30 millibars. So now we need to get this uh, soot levels down from 14 grams, we need to get that under six. Now the problem with that is it won't come down on its own because that's a calculation according to the pressure. So what we're going to do is go back hot functions DPF and then we're going to tell it it's had a new DPF because it's been cleaned What that's saying is you can't tell it it's had a new DPF if the pressure is still high or you haven't replaced it because you can cause overheating. But now the pressure is low enough, we can do it. So that just resets the calculations on the pressure for the DPF or how much soot is in accumulated. So that's complete. Okay, now that's done, we can go back into the live data again. We just need to find the differential pressure. And the grams, so we have here and here. Now you can see they're both on zero. Check the codes, no codes are detected. That's it, it's all sorted. So that's it, we're all done. And we'll see you next time.